parents, teachers, and students, and welcome to lesson one of my three-part story workshop. So, as you probably noticed from the title, this workshop focuses on how all stories, no matter what they're about, have three parts to them. And these are probably parts that you have already learned about in school. Um, if you are in first grade and up, or even sometimes if you're in kindergarten, you have probably already learned that stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, what we're going to learn about in this workshop is we're going to learn about how to use the things we know about a story's beginning, middle, and end, and use those to construct our own stories. Um, these stories can be as long or as short as you would like. They can, um, if you're if you're not comfortable with lots of writing yet, they can be mostly picture based. Um, if you aren't able to write yet, you can tell the story to your parent, and they can write it down for you, or you can just do it in pictures. Um, if you're an older student, then you can use more text. You can incorporate things like chapter breaks if you would like to. Um, really, the, the ways that you can do this are very varied, um, and there's, there's lots of different things you can do. So in this video, I wanted to start off talking about the things that we know about the three parts of a story. And in the next few videos, we're going to learn how to use these things that we know about the three parts of a story to plan, conceptualize, and create our own stories. So the first part of a story is obviously the beginning. Now, when I'm teaching this workshop live, I will have students um, give me suggestions of things that they already know about the beginning. But since that's a little hard to do over video, I'll just tell you some of the things I know about the beginning. If you would like to also make your own list while you're watching this video or after, that would be great because the more things you can think of that have to do with the beginning, a middle, or an end of the story, the more you are going to be able to create a structure and a pattern for yourself to follow as you create your own stories. So. These are a couple of things that I think are important about the beginning, middle, and end of a book. So, a beginning has, first of all, characters. Most importantly, it has the main character. It tells us who the book is about. This can be a person. This can be an animal. In some books, it's even something that is not a person or an animal, um, but maybe an object. Um, but we always start a book or a story learning who the main character is. Who is it about? We also usually learn in the beginning who other important characters are. Sometimes there might be an important adult helper in a story, um, like a parent or a teacher. Sometimes there might be a friend in a story who's important or a sibling. Other times they were introduced in the beginning to somebody called the antagonist or the bad guy of the story. They are the person who tries to stop the main character from getting what the main character wants. Now, one of the examples that I like to use of this is Mo Willems' book, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. In Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, the pigeon is the main character, but there are two primary antagonists who are also really important in the book. The first one is the bus driver who doesn't want the bus driver, to, doesn't want the pigeon to drive the bus. The second is the reader because we in Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus are instructed not to allow the pigeon to drive the bus. And so we are the ones who are continually trying to stop the pigeon from getting what he wants, which is driving the bus. Um, the second thing that we learn, and you probably have guessed this from what we learned about the characters, is what does the main character want? In writing, we call this the main character's goal. Obviously, and don't let the pigeon drive the bus, the main character's goal is to drive the bus. And if you give a mouse a cookie, the main character's goal is to get a cookie. Um, there's lots of different books, in, or lots of different goals in lots of different books, and you can see this in picture books all the way up to chapter books. Um, every story starts with a main character and the goal that they are trying to achieve. Uh, the third thing that's really important in a uh, beginning is the setting. We need to know where this story takes place and what it's like. We need to know how it's impacting the main character, how it's not impacting the main character. If your story takes place on an exploding volcano, it's gonna be pretty different than if your story takes place at a kitchen table. So in the beginning, you want to introduce these three things, the characters, the goal, and the setting. Now, 
we're going to move on to the middle. Either at the end of the beginning or the beginning of the middle, um, you are going to learn something that is really important for the story. In fact, I would say this is almost the most important thing for any story to have, and that is the problem. You are going to learn what is stopping the main character from getting their goal. And whatever is stopping the main character from getting their goal, that's the problem. Really, every story is about a character who has a problem and tries things to deal with it. So once you know what the character's problem is, then you can figure out what are the things that your character is going to try to do to fix their problem. Going back to Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, the pigeon tries a lot of different things to drive the bus. He tries making excuses, he tries different, lots of different tactics, he tries explaining how much he wants to drive the bus. Um, he tries a lot of different things. So, we're going to say, trying to fix the problem. Now, if you have read many books, or even if you have only read a few books, you probably will know that the main character often has to try a lot of things to fix the problem. Usually the first thing that they try is not the thing that fixes their problem all the way. Or if it does fix their problem, then you have another problem. If Going back to if you give a mouse a cookie, the mouse's first problem is that he wants a cookie. But once he gets a cookie, then he starts to want more things. He starts to have more problems. And the main character of the book, the other main character of the book, the, the child who's helping the mouse, has the problem of trying to help the mouse get the things that it wants. Um, so a lot of the time, you have many things that your main character tries before they successfully fix the problem. Sometimes those can get more and more funny or more and more scary or more and more intense as the book goes on. After the middle, after we've been introduced to the problem and seen what the main character tries to do to fix the problem, then we get to the end. The end, as you have probably guessed, is the solution to the problem. Your main character may at this point have tried a lot of things to fix their problem and none of them work. But finally, they get to the solution to their problem. That's the thing that they try that actually fixes their problem. Um, you also, after that, you get to the end. You, the, you figure out how the book is going to end. There are lots of different ways that a book can end. And you can see from the two examples that I've used so far of Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus and If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, you can see that those two books have very different endings. In Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, the pigeon never gets to drive the bus. So he does not achieve his goal because the antagonist, or you, the reader, holds him back from that. At the end of Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, the pigeon sees a semi-truck and thinks, oh, if he can't drive the bus, maybe he's gonna try to drive the semi-truck. Um, this is, in my opinion, a very funny ending because even though the main character doesn't achieve his goal, it's pretty silly and we enjoy reading that ending and we enjoy imagining what's going to happen when the pigeon tries to go drive the semi-truck. There are endings that are happy. Um, the, the, a lot of fairy tales have happy endings. Cinderella gets to marry the prince. Um, Snow White defeats her evil stepmother, that kind of thing. There are also some stories that have sad endings where the main character doesn't get their goal and it's kind of a sad thing. So when you're trying to figure out how your book should end up, what your main character should end up getting or not getting, and what their life is going to look like after the story is finished, you can decide if you want a funny ending a happy ending or a sad ending. All of those endings can be good endings for your book and you as the author get to decide which one you are going to choose.